Good morning. Morning. This is Martin Parker. <laughs> uh, Martin's a survivor. I had tested the cancer two, two years ago. 2017. No, so three, three years, years ago. Uh, and he just lives up the road from me. So uh, we got to be glad we go through it. Offered him a bit of advice. But he's a good, strong lad. But uh, have a quick interview, really, and see if you could tell us a bit about uh, how you first got diagnosed. What? I um, found a tiny, the only way I can describe it is a piece of grit on on my left, was it? Left. Yeah. <laughs> I hope. I hope. <laughs> um, went to the doctors, doctor couldn't find anything, so she said, you're packing. I uh, wasn't too happy with that, so I went back again. Um, persevered a bit, got referred. It took about, I think it was about two or three months before I got the really? ultrasound because the doctor said it wasn't really that important. Yeah. <laughs> um, We're got, not going to mention any names. No, no, <laughs> got the ultrasound and uh, yeah, before I knew it, I was in with a urologist. Um, took the the testicle out and then got diagnosed with luckily stage one. Right. So when you obviously you persevered with it, but when when they actually told you it was cancer, what what, what do you remember your first feeling? Um, disbelief really. Um, I always thought that it was indestructible. I was, yeah. you know, not, nothing was going to get me. I was going to live forever, and um, we were expecting our second, our second boy. Um, and it was just a whirlwind of emotions. It was, it was just surreal. It was, you know, just stops you dead in your tracks. Yeah. Time just seems to stand still. And you're sitting there and, and with a McMillan nurse one side and your neurologist next to you and they go, yeah, you've got cancer and you go, oh shit, things just got real. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, and then it's all the things, am I going to live? Am I going to see me, me second born? Am I going to see me first one grow up? Yeah. All them things go through your head, and they're still talking, but you'd have no listening. idea what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. They're talking to you, they're giving you leaflets and pamphlets, and you've got no idea. All you want to do is get up and go. go. I got up, left the room. Obviously, the missus was in tears, I was in tears. I left the room, and um, that's when you first FaceTimed me just, just after. Uh, how did you get on? And I said, yeah, yeah it's, it's cancer. Right, what is it? And then you explain what was going to happen next because I hadn't listened to them. Yeah. Um, and then it was the, you know, it was... I can't remember doing that actually, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, it was, you told me uh, what to expect next. Um, I'd go and see an oncologist, which I did. Uh, he offered me the two choices of either surveillance or um, one dose of chemo, which I went for. Um, and I remember this to this day, you said to me on the phone, You'll be all right, but I'll speak to you in 12 months when your head falls off. And I went, piss off, mate. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm a strong lad. I'm not gonna <laughs> 12 months later, Philly! <laughs> I, yeah, I remember you doing that, but I don't remember. Well, I do say to people, uh, you can't go through cancer and one day and be all right. It gets you at some point. Yeah. And a lot of men won't admit that, but you do, which is great. But a lot of men go, Piss off, Phil. Uh, I'll be all right. But almost all ring me within a year ago, and my head's gone. Yeah, and that's not a bad thing because it's tiring. Because you put a brave face on and you be strong, and it, that's draining. Yeah, I mean the the, the 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 worst thing for me was twelve months later I started having um, dizzy spells and feeling awful in, in myself and feeling drained and kept going back to doctors and obviously you think something's come back. Yeah. So that starts worrying you. And I remember being <laughs> sat at work at my desk and I started trembling, went grey and I just went, I've got to go. I've got to leave. So I walked, got up, walked out my boss, went, where are you going? I went, I walked out. I didn't go back to work for three months. Right. I, I just, and I went back to doctors. I spoke to my mate's mum who's a nurse and she said, you're having panic attacks. Yeah. That's anxiety. And I went, no, I don't get panic attacks. I don't get anxiety. Yeah. Went back to doctors and said, could it be panic attacks or anxiety? And he went, yeah, it could be. He said, try these. Two weeks later, 
I was uh, feeling fine. So that was the harder than that, the actual treatment for me. The the mental bit twelve yeah. months later was a lot more strenuous. It took a lot longer for me to get over it. The the operation was painful, but within a couple of weeks, you. I mean, my second born was was born four days after the operation. Really. So I didn't have chance to for that to really. Don't yeah. worry, it was like you know you, you can't drive for two weeks. Your missus in labour. Guess what? You're driving. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, so that, that that bit was painful. The chemotherapy was unpleasant. It wasn't anything. It was still it's still it, done. Yeah, 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 but it was it was like hangover for a couple of weeks. It, it was just unpleasant. It wasn't. So um, you had the, you had the car one round of carpal platinum. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which was unpleasant. It wasn't nice. I wouldn't. Well, I've never had that. But I've, you've had everything else. I've <laughs> bypass all that shit, mate. Uh, um, no, but you but. But that's what I'm saying. I try to tell people uh, that the psychological effect of cancer, the, what, there is no re real, there is, but it's a lot better now, but there's no real setup for a man to say, I'm having issues. Cancer. May I just go? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to use terminology, medical terminology, but we, me and you would say to each other, May I just go? Yeah, it's fell off. And do you think that was. Because you were trying so hard to be not to not be normal. By it. To be normal. I, try, I, I rushed back to work. I went back to work. I think, in hindsight, I went back to work too soon. With me second born being born so close to my treatment, I was very selfish in a way. I didn't want to connect with James. I didn't want to get close to James. Oh, I understand. But, because I thought, what happens if something, what happens if something does happen yeah, to yeah, me? Yeah. Um, then I've already got one that I'm close to. Yeah. The other one's going to be close to me, and selfishly, I didn't want to put that burden on me or him. So I distanced myself from me from me me second born for a, for a good six months, and that was that was horrific. It yeah. was the worst thing I could have done. We're really we're really close now. In fact, he, he, he's the cutest. He's, kid he, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he was the cutest baby I've ever seen. Yeah, when I first went round to his house. Yeah, the, goes, the milkman's a good looking. Yeah, yeah. He goes, <laughs> this is this is new. But I was like. That is the cutest baby I've ever seen. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and now he just runs up and head butcher. Yeah. <laughs> but now we, we, we have a, a rushed to get back to normality. I wanted to feel normal again. I wanted to go back to being the the man of the house again. So I went yeah. back to work and everything was fine to begin with. And then all of a sudden these trembles came and, and I'm thinking, what's next? What else have I got? And yeah. Has it come back? I remember leaving work. The last time I went before, I went, I went off for three months and I sat in Starbucks at the bottom of Old uh, Old Hall Street with my mum, yeah. bawling my eyes out. Yeah. And she's crying and she's going, what's up with you? And I'm going, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I just don't feel right. I don't feel me. And it, it just thought, the whole, the whole the, the, my whole life, uh, two to three months after that, just felt a bit. And yeah. it was all a, a case of me trying to bottle everything in, trying to get back to normal. And then my head going, hang on a minute. I haven't had a chance to process this. Yeah, yeah. And then it just came out in all these symptoms that I was getting tested for um, uh, blood pressure, um, diabetes, getting tested for um, dizzy spells. And yeah. it, was, it was nothing. There was nothing physically wrong with me. I was sat in the park hospital one day, drip out one arm, ECG on, and they're going, Mr. Parker, there's nothing oh, wrong with you. You are physically fine. Yeah. And I'm going, well, why do I feel so crap? So, yeah. And it was all up here. This was making my body feel terrible. The brain is a, is a strange thing. Yeah, right? yeah. And it was all because I bottled it up. Bottled it up, bottled it up. Even you ring me up, you're feeling all right. So, I mean, mate. Yeah. Well, yeah. I knew, you see, it was... Yeah, I've you've been, been there, done that. I've been, been, been and there. I was going, no, it's 12 months, you'll be back. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I knew you, you were going to lose your mind or anything like that. You didn't lose your mind. But... And... And no offence when I know from doing this for years and years, if someone's talking to me, you're nah, I'm all right, I'm fine, it's not. Yeah. I know that every person who like that, and I'm not going to have a go at you, yeah, yeah. will eventually Crumble. Some, something will, will snap. And that's why I always try and stay in touch with people. Are you all right? No, I'm really yeah. Right. Uh, let's say that Tony Martin, really, and a couple of other lads who actually asked me if I'm all right now. <laughs> Uh, but 
How did you, how did you feel? Uh, you lost your testicle, you had the, the, the chemo. Yeah. Um, how did you feel for checkups? Uh, in what respect? The, the ones that I go to every... The one, ones that you go to the checkup for the cancer hospital a couple of days before? And... Um, at first, I felt very apprehensive, very worried. Um, now, I just see it as, you know, it's like a, an MOT. It's like, I've got to go and get it done. Yeah. I, I go, get my blood done. One thing that I did struggle with was when I had the chemotherapy, they put the cannula in and they hit a nerve. Yeah. And she pushed straight away in and screaming the place down. <laughs> and then the head nurse goes, if he's in that much pain, you can't have that. So she pulled it out and I went, <laughs> <laughs> knocked a bottle of coke flying. Um, next minute, I've got three of them on me, keeping me up in the chair. So every time I went for a needle after that, I was going, oh, yeah. here, we go, here we go again, here we go again. But um, now it's it's just one of them things that, you know, we're lucky we're in this country where we can go and get these checkups oh, done yeah. every, Definitely. make mine are every four months at the minute. Well, apart from COVID's kicked off, mine have been a little bit more spaced out since. But I just feel lucky that I can go in, get that checkup, I get the phone, I, I don't get a phone call to say everything's all right. So if I don't get a phone call, I'm pretty certain everything's going to be all right. And then I go back the next one. Would you prefer them to ring you as soon as they know the results? Because they yes. say, unfortunately these days, they say, we'll ring you if there's any bad, good or bad news. Right? What they should be doing is ringing you as Regardless. soon as they know and saying, good news, Yeah, yeah. everything's all clear. So you can then crack on. Well, they used because, to chase because, them. Because we, we can think the opposite. They've I've lost the results. Yeah, yeah. And they've forgotten about me. See, I used to ring, I used to, is it, what's the cancer nurse? In Tracy. Hospital? I used Tracy to ring Tracy and, and, and say, listen, can, me well, I think. I say, can you can you find anything out for me? Uh, or I'd ring my GP and say, listen, I want to know. Yeah. But, you know, the the, the, the the busy people, they've got all sorts going on. So now, because I'm, I'm at three years, I just sort of leave it until I go back. Yeah. Then I get the wimpiest handshake off the, the oncologist and, and then he tells me everything so I'll see, <laughs> see you in three months. <laughs> Which one's... Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we're, not, we're not seeing names. Yeah. But the thing is, since Professor Clark left, who, who was like the main, the main geezer, he'd ring you. He'd ring you and go, Morris, hello. I go, all right, Professor. He'd go, yes, it's me, Professor Clark. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I'm all right. All results are fine. See you in three months. Enjoy your life. And that stopped. Yeah, that, 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 that phone call you go. Oh, thank God, oh, for, that, thank God th for that. Three months. Because he, 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 he knew that people would want to hear good news yeah, as yeah. soon as possible rather than sitting there. Have they lost my results? Have they forgotten about me? Do you, do you see what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. I love it to go back that way, but I understand. I've got no shame, really, but I, love, I, I understand that funds are tight and doctors are under pressure. I, I get that. But I think it still should be like that. Um, yeah, yeah. I think especially for people who have, who are pretty new to it, the first twelve months especially, they should get a phone call to say everything's yeah. fine. But, I mean, the psycho, like I said, the psychological effect. They don't realise the, the the stress of the first year. Maybe that little things like a phone call saying you're fine helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would instead of you having to chase them, thinking, "Am I all right?" Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I mean, I've just had my three-year CT scan a couple of a couple of weeks ago. So it's gone. You drank it? Yeah, yeah. You only make half a cup. <laughs> me <laughs> shaking, like I'm <laughs> yeah, so um, I've just had my, my three-year CT scan. I've got my bloods on the 26th, and then I've got a phone consultation the week after that. But how are you, how are you, uh, looking back now, from the, when you got told to now, uh, what what jumps into the head that was the, the worst thing? The worst thing was the head with the, the head falling off. Yeah. The the whole experience. The worst bit was that because it even though the the good the, there's no good thing about having cancer. The good the, the the good thing about when you're being diagnosed is you've always got an appointment. You've yeah. always got something to look forward to. There's a plan in place. You know what's happening next. They'll go right. You take your testicle and you go right okay and then after that you'll come in to see so and so after that you'll come in to see so and so you'll have your chemo then you'll have this 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 then once you've got the go like you'll do all clear see you in six months there yeah. you go wow uh, yeah, well, I've, yeah, what, 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 what next and they go <laughs> nothing that's it 
Okay. Well, I've, I've been in hospital every, every week for the last three months. It's got to be something else. No, that's it. See you, see you later. Push that one a little bit. Yeah, I remember that twice. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then you, just, you sort of go, well, well, well oh, right, okay. And then you, do, do you go, right, get yourself back to work. So you go, right, well, all right, okay. You go back to work and you get yourself into a stressful situation at work. You're already trying to bury three months of crap. And then 12 months yeah. later, as you said, something snaps and you, you, you go on a wobbler. Yeah, which was the reason I set this up back in 2003, I think it was. It's because my event, I had no one to talk to. Yeah. And if, if somebody had said to me, say you, you, you'd you had it for years, and I was here, and you ran at me and said, uh, it's all right to be upset. Don't, you know, less of a man if you're crying, that sort of stuff. I thought there was something up with me because I'd cry, you know, and, and sit alone in the front room. And every fucking advert on the telly is, is cancer research. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you get cancer, you watch a telly, every advert is about cancer. You're like, oh my God, it's true, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, I was, I was lucky because I, I went to work, I was working with a fellow called Keith Warlow. He was an ex-squaddy. And when I told him I found a lump, he put me in touch with Mick. Who yeah, then put yeah. me in touch with the group and yourself? Yeah. Um. But if I hadn't have found that avenue, I don't know whether I would have done. And I'd have been on my own. Yeah. And it had been me mum or me me wife coming to me, and even though they're trying to be there for you, you're on your own. You're going through it. Yeah. Pretty much on your own, or you feel like you are. So it was nice to to get the phone call, and you know this is what's going to happen. You know, you're going to be all right. You want this is the one that you want. If you're going to get it, do you want stage one? Yeah. And this is what you want. And then I rang you up and you went, Yeah, congratulations. I was thinking, Congratulations. Fucking cancer. What am I going to congratulations for? Pat on the back. <laughs> yeah. But do you think, I mean, plugging us a little bit, does it help to have a group and some yes. sort of yeah. yeah, 100%. And I've made friends for life from the group. Yeah. There's a there's a couple of these. Who? Not me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, come here for a coffee and play, and play with the cat. So. Why are you mopping up? <laughs> um, yeah, there's there's a couple of lads that that I, that I now think is really good friends. So, what would you say to somebody in your position now when you first got? If you went to talk to someone who'd just been diagnosed, what advice would you give to a young lad who's just been diagnosed? Um, mentally, I mean, just take approach. it slowly. Don't rush things. Don't try and get back to normal. Things you just go going through are not normal. You yeah. can't rush back into it. You've got to let your, you've got to let your head catch up with your body, because your body gets through it, and then you think I'm fine. I'm going to be all right, but your head's two months behind you. So your body might be all right. You might be cured. You might have had all your treatments, but your head still needs time to process it. So even though your treatment's over. I'd recommend that they, if they if they weren't going, they didn't have to go back to work financially. Stay away for a bit. Let yourself have some time yeah. to yourself to catch up. There was a lad on there not so long ago. He works in Port Sunlight, and I said the same to him: Don't rush back into it because you'll end up like me in twelve months' time, sitting in a, a Starbucks with your mum, pouring your yeah. eyes out for no reason whatsoever, or you don't think there's a reason. Just let yourself process what you've been through. It's a horrific time. Even stage one, it's horrific. It's yeah. nasty. Oh, no, psychological, yeah. So you were given tablets? No. No, well, oh, yeah. Doctor, the doctor, the doctor, oh, for, for when you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still on them. On the VL? Yeah, and yeah. What, do you remember what they're called? Uh, Citrilipan. Cit Citrilipan. Citrilipan. Oh, that doesn't work. Yeah. 20 milligrams. Yeah. Um, I tried coming off them about 12 months after I went on them and the symptoms was, started creeping back in so I was like, sorry, stay on for a bit longer. Yeah. So I'm aware. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else you think that's helped with, with when you head wobbled a bit? Did you actually all of a sudden say, oh, my head's gone because maybe I'm, I've been too brave about the cancer? Um, no, it wasn't. That there was no light bulb moments. It was... I went to the doctors, I spoke to you, to you guys, I went to the doctors, the doctor said I, I had vertigo at first, right. which I didn't, I am not scared of heights at all, um, then I went to, I got sent to, to a counsellor, I went to the counsellor, I sat in this counselling room for a week, for, for 
five weeks, I think it was, one day a week. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is this is weird, this. And they're, they're all absolute loo balls, absolutely <laughs> loony. And at the end of the five weeks, I, I pulled the counsellor to one side and said, listen, this is why I'm here. And she went, you're on the wrong course. I've been on the wrong course for five bloody weeks. That what wasn't, were you talking about? You they, were, they were just all, it was all about... Childhood. It was no. It was all about, you know, if you've got if you've got an um, if you've got an issue, put it in a mental box, yeah, and then put the box on the side, and at the end of the week, have an hour of worry time, and worry about. I'm sitting there going, this, this is weird. This, this is not me. This. I, I'm not trying to. <laughs> And these were all, and then we had, we'd have that meditation. It was bizarre. Well, my meditation, yeah, but. All right. Yeah, it was. It was a but at the end of the day, a bloody good rap to a survivor. Yes. Habit, helps more than that. Yes. Would you say? Yeah. Yeah. So, me talking to you, it doesn't matter who we are, but. Someone who. Somebody who understands. Someone who understands who's been there, who's, who's been where you are, who's felt the feelings that you're feeling. You know that you're listening, you know that you understand. Instead of me sitting there, I could talk to my wife all day. She's lovely, my wife, really cool, but yeah. she's not she been there. She yeah. doesn't understand. She tries to, but until you've been sat there in that chair with the Macmillan nurse there and your doctor there, and they go, you've got cancer, and your whole world just go... Oh. It's just, it's, I remember it, man. Yeah, it's just, it is, it's a very surreal time, and quite humbling as well. You, oh, yeah. You, you, you realise you, you are human. You are mortal. Yeah, you're not this... Older people get cancer. Yeah, old people. What, are you sure? What, how old are you? 32. So you're still young. Yeah. Yeah, so you're, hang on. Have you, have, you ever, have you ever checked your testicle before? Are you aware of the age? No, I wasn't aware of the age. Um, to be fair... Because it is common in young Yeah, man. I used to... I, I'd found a cyst years ago when I was about 18... And I had an old doctor and he said to me, what's the date of birth? And I'd say, 9th of, 9th of February. He said, right, on the 9th of every month, I want you to get a shower and check your plums. That's cool. And I remember him telling me it. And then 9th or as close to the 9th as I remembered, at least once a month I checked. And I, and I found it because I knew what I, what I was oh, feeling. Oh, so you found for. it because you, you regularly checked? Yeah, yeah. All oh, right, got you. Yeah, oh, because I knew what I was feeling well for. Well, on that doctor. It was... I knew it shouldn't be there because yeah. of, oh, I, I, I'd been checking them since I was 19. I was like, that's not, not normally there, that. And it was, it was like a little grain of sand. It was like all grit. It was dead tough. Really small. Yeah. But I knew it shouldn't be there. And it's because that doctor said, on the 9th of every month, I want you to check lungs. Yeah. And you want it early because of that. That's one positive. Yeah. So over, over, over everything, is anything positive come out of it? Um, the, the the friends that I've gained is yeah. probably the biggest one. The um, the group of lads that you know when we go out over Christmas we go to boxing or whatever. That's that's the major gain of it. Well, um, you all go out. Yeah, I'm, well, you're I'm working. normally working. <laughs> yeah, and then you take. I, I work in, in boxing by the way. <laughs> and then you give us a lift. Yeah, and I give, <laughs> after the boxing has finished, I give them all a lift home. They're all drunk. Yeah, yeah, but um, it's given me a better outlook on life. Yeah. You know, it's life's too short to worry about material things. I mean, at first it was I want the, the big telly or I want the nice car or and now it's just like you know what? I want the telly to work? Yeah, as long as long as <laughs> as long as the kids are happy and they're healthy and the wife's happy and healthy, money doesn't matter anymore. I mean, it's nice to have a bit. I mean, it does help. Yeah, yeah but yeah. it's not the be all and end all anymore. True. The last last question actually, like you've 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 you know, I've got you here saying about your kids. You've got two lads. Yes. Who are eight and four, seven three. and three. Right. At what age would you think that I need to? All right, lads, daddy's had this. And he, because we don't know if it's genetic. Yeah, yeah. We, I will have already been speaking to Jack about it. Not, nothing too intense, just, you know, because he, he, he realised there was something going on when I was off. Yeah. Um, so... I've already spoken to Jack, but I'd say probably that just after 10, 11, that would be the, the ideal time when they start listening. Um, James, at the minute, you could say, yeah, you know, 
He's super busy. He just <laughs> knows with a bat. <laughs> roll, roll up there, but yeah, that's just the way he is at the minute. Jack will listen to what you've got to say, but I think it's too young to be drumming anything into yeah. them, and you don't want to scare them away. Obviously, yeah, you don't want to scare them away. But um, I always want. I've got a son, uh, but I always thought if it's genetic, when do I? At what point do I say you need to start checking your tests? Because I still don't know when's the proper time, you know. Because obviously, it depends on the child, time, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, but when maybe, yeah, maybe when they're about thirteen to fifteen. Oh, yeah. Because I think we should sit our lads down, or our kids, excuse me, and say, "You need to talk to, to do that anything." But there's this story I tell, and this is when I was I was in the army with a, and the physical training instructor was a jolly called Dave Brown. He's the funniest man you've ever met. He's a little skinny Jordy, fit me well. And we went on our army reunion and he came over to me and he goes, hey Phil, I've seen a... Oh, Scouts, as he goes, it's great. Are we Scouts? I've seen you. We'd see you. Know? <laughs> and he goes, we had a scare. He had a scare with his son. His, his son found a lump. And I went, what happened? <laughs> and he goes, I don't know if it's just Jordy. He's not, not Jordy. He's our salt in the earth, aren't they? Mm. They, they, they don't care. I, I made my son get on the table uh, you imagine listening to Jordi Action yeah. is telling me my son was 15 and maybe son get on the table drop his pants and lift his penis up and I felt for him <laughs> that's how close he is with his kids and he's going ah, I, can't, I, can't, I can't can I feel nothing near me <laughs> he's going oh, I'm jammed me 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 and I said is he from Alan <laughs> you know, <laughs> well Jordi but I was saying your, your your lad's on the table. Your feeling is nuts, and he's going to the re a bit, Dad. And he's going, I, I can't even feel nothing, son. <laughs> yeah, you know? and 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 you were, and he wasn't bothered, and he wasn't embarrassed, and, you, and, and he goes, no. That's how he's brought his kids up. He can, he can they can talk to him. anything about him. And what I'm stood there. There might be a lawsuit in there somewhere. Know, I'm, I'm, I'm stood there with a pint, and he's telling me this, and I'm trying not to. Laugh, because I'm going. Oh, you've done the right thing there. Oh, that's incredible. You're that close to your son, but turn that to me nothing. But at first you think, Jesus. But then you go, How amazing is that? Like your lad can go up to you and say, Dad, I found the lump. And I go, and I'm not sure of it. I'll have a check for you. Yeah, there is that. No, but it, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I I've found since I've come back to work, I I am now the the resident person to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As soon as as soon as someone's got a problem, they'll come knocking on the door and go. In fact, I've had one go. What do you think of this? And he's literally in the toilet, whipped <laughs> yeah, it up. Yeah. I've gone. Right, okay. Well, it's not cancer, but it shouldn't look like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think you've got something totally <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah, people do start coming. Out. The thing is, that's the only thing that does matter about cancer. A bit. People will stop talking to you like about football, and they'll single you out for. Oh, my mum died of cancer. People will come up to me I've known for years. They won't say, uh, did you watch the footy last night? Or that was boxing. They'll come up and say, oh, my cousin died of cancer. They automatically come to me. Yeah. Anyway, you can't you just talk to me about something else you want? So, I don't know. That's a bad thing, really, but, you know, you have to accept it if you put yourself in a position. Yeah. But, yeah. But, no, that's Martin. Thanks for talking to us, Martin. You're welcome. And uh, he's now going to go and prove my floor. I'm doing windows because I've hurt my back. <laughs> and, uh, no. Maybe even a little bacon butty. <laughs> Not happening. The wife will kill me because I don't do it at home. No, but thanks for coming, Martin. You're welcome. I appreciate that. And uh, that's Martin's story. So I uh, hope you enjoy it.